These, however, were all doomed. Economic needs led to the building of a new dam, which created a huge lake, 500 kilometers in length, and which served as an energy source for the neighboring electric power station and helped to increase the land suitable for cultivation. South of the dam, however, all the ancient monuments lying on both sides of the lake were destined to disappear if no international response was made to the appeal of the Egyptian and Sudanese governments. In March 1960, during an official celebration held by UNESCO, an appeal was made for international solidarity. Une protection universelle est due au monument de valeur universelle. Votre appel n'appartient pas à l'histoire de l'esprit parce qu'il veut sauver les temples de Nubie, mais parce qu'avec lui, la première civilisation mondiale revendique publiquement l'art mondial comme son indivisible héritage. The temples of Abu Simbel, built in rock, stand tall and majestic on the outskirts of the Nubian desert. The great temple, buried under the sand, was only discovered in 1813 by Ludwig Burkhard, the Swiss Orientalist. Of these temples, situated along the Nile, south of Aswan, the smallest is dedicated to the goddess Hathor, its facades are decorated with colossal statues of more than 10 meters in height, representing Ramses II and his wife Nefertari. The illustrious monarch of the 19th dynasty, Ramses, had these temples built in 1260 BC at the end of the Golden Age in Egypt. Four colossal statues of more than 20 meters in height, representing the pharaoh, stand in front of the great temple. Beside these giants, the members of the royal family look like dwarfs. On the outer walls, bas-reliefs portray the life of the people 3,000 years ago. Two divinities link the lotus and papyrus, symbolizing the unity of the kingdoms of Lower and Upper Egypt. Besides the statues of the queen and her favorite children, the facade of the temple is decorated with effigies, symbolizing the greatness of the sovereign and the respect he inspired in his enemies. The inscriptions narrate feats accomplished under his rule. Long lines of captives are witness to his military prowess. sight is that of the sunset seen through the temple, an effect created by the particular position of the temple. It's evidence of the skill of the architects of that period and their knowledge of astronomy. Twice a year, in February and in October, the rays of the sun miraculously penetrate into the narrow gallery between the huge pillars and reach far into the inner sanctuary, usually bathed in darkness. These rays illuminate the statues of the three gods, Amun, Ra Horakti, and the Pharaoh himself, leaving the statue of Ptah, the god of the underworld, in darkness. In the Great Hall of Columns, the colossi measure more than eight meters in height, 
and lend the pharaoh the attributes of the god Osiris. The bas-reliefs tell of the glory of the monarch. In 1285 BC, in a grand military battle in Syria, Ramses defeated the Hittites, who had dared invade his kingdom. One cannot but admire the superb talent of the artists of that period. thousand years later, the descendants of the pharaoh are faced with problems that would have bewildered their ancestors. 